Ever since I got our Haas CNC mill, I've had tons of people reach out to me and ask me like, how difficult is it? Like how intimidating really is it to learn the Haas CNC control? And I would argue that it's relatively simple and I think it's more or less straightforward. So today I thought I would take you guys through a series of steps showing you exactly what it takes, command a tool change, jog the machine into location, set a work offset, then we're gonna run a program. After we're done running the program, we're gonna do a quick edit at the control and then we're gonna rerun the program just so you guys can see the actual change. And I'm gonna set up multiple cameras so that you guys get to see the cut and you get to see every single button push, all the action, so there's nothing left to question. So with that said, let's head out to the shop. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I tried shooting this two or three different times. It's pretty difficult, so I skipped all the fancy lighting. We've got one, two, three, four, and five cameras rolling because I want you guys to see absolutely everything. Here's the USB drive. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna head over here and we're gonna put the USB drive in the machine. And it's gonna tell us uh, real, real quickly that the USB is mounted. But the first thing we need to do is we need to set a work offset. And in order to set a work offset, we need to command a tool change. And that's relatively simple. Anytime you're dealing with the control, you almost always are gonna to have to touch the MDI button because you're manually entering data. So MDI, you'll see that the MDI screen gets highlighted and you'll just select tool 20 and then ATC forward or reverse really won't matter. So let's hit forward and it's gonna go grab the probe. So the next thing we need to do is jog the probe to its proper location. And so again, you'll hit MDI, handle jog, you'll select your increment, one ten thousandth, one thousandth, ten thousandths, or a hundred thousandths, we'll choose ten thousandths. And then the axis that you wanna move, Y, I'm sorry, Z, and we'll just crank it down slowly. And you wanna do this carefully because you don't wanna crash this probe. This probe is not moving in a protected mode. Now we've moved our probe into location, so we've commanded a tool change and we've jogged the machine, two very simple operations. Now we need to set the work offset. So we come over here to the offset page and you'll see that there are two tabs, tool and work. You could page up, but a shortcut is just to hit F4. And you'll see that the G54 already has some work coordinates in that because I already probed this before we did, before I shot this segment, but we're gonna do it again anyways. Right here it says F3, probing action, actions, and you'll hit that. Rectangle block, that's fine. We're gonna choose offset 54. X, this is about, oh, 2.1. And again, 2.1. And then we want the probe to dip down about a half an inch to measure. And as you can see, to run this in MDI, you just hit cycle start. Now we have the X and Y location, but we need our origin, we need our Z zero. And so we'll go right back into offset again, hit F3 again, make sure that we're on G54, and we'll come over and down to single surface, and we'll just choose Z minus 0.5, enter, and then run and cycle start, run an MDI. Okay, now we're all set up. We've commanded a tool change, we jogged the machine, we've set our work offset, and now all we need to do is run our part. And so there are a few things you can do to be safe. Anytime you're running a tool path that you've never ran before, you can slow the rapids down by hitting five, 25, or 50. And if that's not enough for you and you wanna be even safer, you can hit this handle feed, and then right here when you dial the wheel back, it'll slow the feed rate down. So I'm pretty confident in this tool path, so we'll leave it at 25%, 100% feed, now we need to load a program. List program, we'll go all the way up to the USB, come down to video demo part, select that program, hit memory, and now that we're in memory mode, when we hit cycle start, it's off to the races. I probably should have adjusted the air gun, but we'll do that if we have to. And I keep my thumb on here just in case.
That's it, we ran our first program. Now that we ran our first part, there's a couple of different ways you can edit your program. You can do it while it's running by just hitting edit, but our toolpath is already finished. So we need to go into list program. You'll see video demo part. To edit, you hit alter. And here's a little trick. If you're gonna search for a specific tool or specific function, right here in the input box, we know that we need tool 11, right? So we'll hit T, 1, 1, and then we'll hit the down arrow, and you'll see that this is for side pocket tool changers. It's, the machine would actually be indexing the tool so that that tool would be ready to go, but we need to do that one more time. So we'll hit T11 and the down arrow again, and it finds the next instance. Now we can just use the arrows or the wheel, and we're looking for our Z minus .415. We wanna change that. We wanna change that to Z minus 0 0.790 right here, and then we're gonna hit alter. And so now, when we run this toolpath, the exact same thing's gonna happen, but it's gonna dip down just a little bit lower, and it's gonna rerun that exact same toolpath. So let's go ahead and hit memory to save this thing. Okay, now that we've edited the program, there's no real need to rerun the entire program, right? We don't need that facing app. We just need to run the second contour toolpath. And so that was tool 11. So we'll come right over to the control and you can see in the input box, we'll hit T, 1, 1, down arrow. And it shows us the first instance, but we really need the second instance. So we'll do it again, T, 1, 1, down arrow. And I'm just gonna scroll down two, two points just so it doesn't bounce around and grab different tools. And we hit start, 25% rapid. It's gonna come up, come down and rerun the tool path, lower. And that's it guys, it's really just that simple. So today I just wanted to help take some of the fear, take some of the intimidation away. We commanded a tool change, we jogged into position, we loaded a program, we ran a program, we edited it and then we re-ran it. And I showed you a couple of tips and tricks as far as searching through your programs to find specific lines of code or specific tools. The same way we search for a tool with like T11 down arrow, you can search for a specific line of code if you have to say pause a program in the middle of a run. So you just hit like N, you know, 1000 down arrow and it would take you right to that line and then you could start from there. So hope you guys enjoyed watching this video just as much as I enjoyed making it. If you enjoyed this video, do me a huge favor, give me a thumbs up. And if you wanna be notified when new videos come out, subscribe and then click on the little notification bell and YouTube will notify you when we release new videos. All right guys, bye-bye.